All right, so in this video, what we're going to talk about is going to be an average instruction. So um, how to add, how to use an average instruction, some of the use cases and stuff like that. Now, first, I'm starting off from scratch because I want to actually build all of this in front of you. So first, um, being that we have this and this is going to be on an emulator. So just keep in mind, I'm using slot 11 on emulator and i'm going to go ahead and go online and download this so that we do all of our programming online um, again that's there's nothing that we're affecting on this um, this is emulator version 34. Uh, all right so now that we are downloading so let's go ahead and get that out the way and what we're going to do is we're going to build a uh, fal instruction to load in some information and then basically fill an array <clears throat> and then after we fill the array we're going to average it so let's first add a rung and we're going to throw in just like a timer or something like this and let's just say like i've used the, the average instruction just for about um well a lot of things really like positioning uh pre-positioning um capturing positions uh, uh like speeds and stuff like that and just averaging speeds to make sure everything is working accordingly um, data tracking and stuff like that so just keep that in mind there's many many different ways so we're going to call this uh, the data data timer <clears throat> just for simple processes um, and we'll keep this uh, We'll keep this as a free running at like five five milliseconds. It's perfectly fine. We do, don't need to be, uh, what we're doing, like I said, is uh, basically coming in here and keep capturing the information. Now, how am I gonna capture this information? So well, I'm gonna add an FAL instruction. Again, you can type that in up, up above. You get your FAL instruction. Now, the first thing you need to do again, as we've done before, is we add our control so this is going to be our uh, data tracking <clears throat> so that'll be our actual name for that now when it comes to this we're going to have our length and our position and our stuff like that now the mode we want um we're going to have increment uh I, i'm just going to use increment for this the destination um, the expression that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and build our, our array. So this is going to be our data array. Okay, and then we'll put a data array. Let's just make it 60. There's basically 60 seconds in a minute, right? Uh, so let's just make it 60 and just go off of that. All right, so we're going to have a data array and then we need to keep that in mind that we're going to point at a certain location on that so keep we're going to copy our instruction of our FAL instruction we're going to put it in brackets and then we're going to dot POS which is the position right that's the position now that's going to give us the position you can easily see that gives us the position and our automatically calls that so what tag am I going to be using here for the expression really simply Let's go ahead and make this uh, pretty clear. I'm going to use the dot ACC. So the accumulated value right here, I'm going to load that into here. Now, this sound, sounds a little bit uh, strange, but it, it works perfectly, right? So let's put our length in there because that's our, our length is going to be our actual array data. Uh, we're loading in 60 points. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and put in that this is not, let's just say, uh, let's just say enabled, right? We could use the done, but let's just use enable. And we're going to go ahead and make sure this is working and filling our data. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to open this up. Now we're going to make sure our array is actually capturing data and you can see that it is <clears throat> so what we're doing is we're capturing data all right so what i want to do from here at being that i have 60 uh, elements in my array 
is what I want to do is I'm going to come back in here and then I want to average that out. Okay, so how would one do that? All right, so you can easily, you can actually come back in here and add this to this same, same exact wrong. And we can do this right here and then come over here. We want to get an average. So uh, we go to file and then we're going to get the average. So right here, we're going to uh, look at the array, okay, that we want to average. That is going to be this data array. Okay, so um, there's a couple different things. Like, make sure you start out with your very first point in your array. Um, the dimensions that we're going to vary, we're not going to vary any. Um, and then the destination. What should the destination be, right? <clears throat> so we'll just call this averaged data. Okay, we'll call that averaged data. And then the control is going to be the name of the average. So average control. So we're just giving a tag name for the actual control itself. Now we still do need a length. Um, the length is again going to have to match your array that you're going to be averaging, or it could be below, but it cannot exceed because you will, you will fault the processor, okay? So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and see if we can average some of this information out. So the average data we're getting right here, you can see this is going, this is the average data that we're getting. So with the five second timer, we're getting our average data at basically two, two and a half milliseconds. You can see that right there. So you can easily go through that. <clears throat> Now let's look at that for instance, let's go and change this to a one second timer and you can see this data is going to start averaging and changing, right? So what is the average of that timer now, right? So as it's growing and, and I'm, I'm doing this as quick as possible, normally what I do is I would put like a timer or sample timer or something like that to sample my data to see when it is like I would put in like a timer up here. Um, we can go ahead and put in uh, TON. <clears throat> and then we'll put data sample time. And as always, I misspell the word sample. That's life. All right, so we can put like a sample time and let's just say we want our sample time at one second. And then we want to put our, uh, basically our timer back at five seconds. Now the sample timer will be the same as the one we put originally for the free running timer. It's just going to be again, a free running timer. So that's what we're going to do. And then what we'll do is come down here and we'll say, well, we only want to average down here when that sample timer is there. Okay. So, and, and I hope, you know, you guys are programming this as you're going so you can see how this process works, but you can see we're still averaging the data, but we're only going to be averaging the data when that sample timer is actually coming in. So we're tracking right here. <clears throat> We can easily see we're tracking the information and we can actually use this for both if we want to. We can come over here. Um, it depends on how you want to control it, but you can come over here and actually put that for both and take that out just like that and have it where the file, the FAL, doesn't shift the data up until the sample timer is actually doing that, right? And as the sample timer is doing that, what we can do is again, we're, we're sampling our, our, or we're pulling our data from our timer and we're loading it into the data, the array, and then we're averaging that at the same time. So you can see our average data right here. It's still averaging the same, same point, 
because we are currently I have it set at 47 47 milliseconds and I'm, as far as my task rate so every 47 milliseconds it's time it's scanning this process um, that's not really a factor in this case because it's a very there's there's no memory being used so there's it's not memory intensive there's no restrictions stuff like that so just keep that in mind but timing is everything when stuff like this happens so uh, especially when positioning um, so you can see this is a rolling time this is this is always rolling right so it's just pointing to a different point of that array and you can see the FAL is, is indexing right so it's index, indexing that position of that array and as soon as it hits 60 it resets itself again having the proper length of your array in both of these instructions is very very critical so um, just keep um, keep that in mind so let's change our timer again let's put that at 10 10 seconds so we're going to start averaging our data for a 10 second timer now now what would that average out to be right so we're going to find out our 10 second timer and then we're going to see our averaging time it basically goes up a little bit but we're, we're watching it rise i would suspect um, just from the history of what we've seen so far it was probably going to be about close to five um, maybe four and a half something like that but again that's just based upon the timing of what we're doing the mechanism of what we're doing and I actually want you to do this process so you can understand the way a FAL instruction works because again we're not using an expression down here we're just loading in the information and then we're using an expression for the destination because we want that's how we are actually pointing to a different point in their array so that's that's kind of critical and then come over here then averaging understanding how you're averaging that and then the proper length of that actual array that array that you're trying to average okay so just keep that in mind that's a very you know, something that you need to understand so we're still averaging our data um, we're coming in and let's take that sample rate down to a lower point and we'll average our data a little bit better so let's see what we end up at and it's right at looks like a right around five right so five milliseconds which is roughly half of what we're doing up here so and that's based upon the 60 and the only reason i did 60 is because it's 60 seconds in a minute uh, so over a minute's time you know then you could actually get your true information so true to form if we had this at a second then we would get our actual information a lot better but sitting here for 60 60 seconds watching this information you just think about it right it's scanning the scan rate is scanning at 47 milliseconds so every 47 milliseconds it's scanning all right so then that's going to add to that time of that actual uh, timer so that it's actually going to be more than a minute right so you got to understand the, the timing of the mechanism of how the process actually the whole process works now one could argue you could put it in continuous task and then you wouldn't have that problem but you will still have that problem the problem with continuous tasks is that your your process as it grows will vary so you do not no longer have control over your your actual uh your task and how it's scanning see i actually can understand my scanning by looking at this right here i can understand my scanning by looking at max scans the intervals between the max intervals between scanning so it's still you, you can see right there the the difference so we're still averaging out no matter what we did um, we're still averaging out at a preset of 10 we're still averaging out right around like again like high fours right around five um, and you can slow this down or speed this up based upon whatever you need to do this is just a simple way an illustration of simulating a uh, a, well, a, a data se a sequence of capturing data and averaging data. Again, I use the very similar instance, you know, in, in like a process positioning, like understanding the positioning of something. Uh, you know, I take a large array of data and then average out that array and then get, use that for like a preload for my next uh, product that's coming in 
or uh, in in one case I've used where an encoder was coming in and it was being timed and it was using as uh, its own event. Um, it was coming in and using it as its own event task. And as it was doing that, it was coming in and it was inaccurate. So what we did instead of using that real time is we took that and averaged that out and it really fine tuned that to get that feet per minute the correct way. Um, so anyway, so just to talk about how to how to use these two, hopefully you learned a lot from this video and you actually did it as well. Um, as simple as this process is, it is running, you can see it and it does help you. Uh, so apologize for how long the video was, but again, when it comes to learning, the importance is grasping what you learn and being able to use it whenever you need to. So implement this, do it, get the muscle memory behind it, and always, as always, continue to learn and continue to better, better yourself. And I appreciate everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.